Hafede, and welcome back to it, the new season and a new name, TNT, Triton News TV. I'm your host, Sean Wago. And I am Hasey San Jose. In today's episode, we'll be giving you the inside scoop of Guam's current status on tourism. After that, we'll show you how Guam Department of Education's night and summer school programs is creating more opportunities for students. And lastly, how musicians on Guam are coping with the pandemic restrictions. Before we get to our feature stories, the University of Guam's Triton Esports team has been smashing the competition in their recent battles for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The team gets together at the UOG Computer Center to practice for several hours. Often live streamed, they participate in online 4 versus 4 scrimmages against U.S. collegiate teams. So far, the team remains undefeated. The team captain, Ronnie Pangalinen, believes that these scrimmages are only the start and that esports has the potential to become something greater. After that, I heard about trying esports at uh, the UOG orientation, the new student orientation. I thought, wow, this is really cool. I wanted to join. And so I joined and tried out. And I thought it's, I thought it's been really nice because I think esports on Guam can be a good thing. I think it actually could be a huge thing. As long as we give it the tools to succeed and we just put enough effort into it, I think we can, it can really become a big thing. Between offline practices, training tools, and stream days, the members build up and improve their technique and skills. Coach Adrian Cabradilla believes that at this rate, the team's progress could mean big things for their future. So we're going to be doing a, lot, a little bit more intercollegiate online tournaments. That's probably going to be the future for like maybe another two years, just to be honest, because this pandemic is still out there and uh, taking lives. But in terms of the esports future, I'd say it's still bright. Although the COVID-19 pandemic has closed off many opportunities last year, esports has found its own and is perhaps here to stay. Expect the team to be competing in more intercollegiate scrimmages in the near future as they enhance their gaming skills. Many businesses on Guam have been struggling due to the lack of tourists in the past year. While there are current plans to reopen Guam's tourism industry, the island remains uncertain about welcoming travelers. TNT reporter Rose Facello explores how local business owners and workers anticipate Guam's reopening. Joe Stadler, owner of Joe's Jet Ski, has been offering sea tours in Tumon's waters for over six years. His family-owned business is the largest Two Lovers Point tour company on Guam. However, like many local businesses on Guam, Stadler has been impacted by the lack of tourists visiting the island. Now that we don't have tourists, we've had small modifications. One of the first ones is that we're operating reservation only. So we do require a reservation and then and then customers are given their own tour, which is a difference from before. The governor plans to reopen Guam's tourism on May 1st by easing travel quarantine restrictions. Travelers with a negative COVID-19 test taken 72 hours or less prior to their arrival would be able to skip Guam's 14-day quarantine. However, Workers and business owners like Stadler aren't expecting tourists to come back so soon. Sheraton accountant Castellampuri believes that it could take months before tourists would visit Guam again. I'm looking at maybe a little bit later than May 1st. That's more realistic to me. Here in Tumon is where tourists would go to visit the beach and shop for high-end retail. Now, all that remains are locals and fitness enthusiasts that go for their daily run. According to the Guam Visitors Bureau, the tourist arrival rate for February has gone down 97% since last year. The lack of tourists can be seen in the streets of Tumon. Resident Ingrid Toyama sees a great difference in what Tumon looks like now. There was still a bit like life, I would say, in the city, but now that over the year it's been, it got just like worse. Because now all you see is like you're just used to a bunch of tourists and you know, the streets being lively on the weekends, but then now all you like you don't see anything. Although tourists are unlikely to come back so soon, Stadler hopes that the island community will support local businesses. I feel like the local community has really come together and they've 
created this buy local, support local initiative that's really been very impactful. In fact, you can see it. You can see the customers coming and they want to spend their dollars here on the local businesses. Part of the reopening plan is to vaccinate half of the island's adult population, and we are expected to reach this goal by May 1st. However, it may still take months before Guam returns to normal. Until then, business owners like Joe Stadler continue to cater to locals and military. This is Rose Facello for Triton News TV. Thank you, Rose. Will Guam be fully reopened to the general public? We'll just have to wait and see. Nine and summer schools are helping students get back on track. That's next. The College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences offers a variety of programs where students can expand their knowledge and capabilities. We help broaden your horizons by experiencing and discovering different cultures from around the world by taking you to places such as Bali, various islands in Micronesia, Japan, China, Europe, New Zealand, and Korea to participate in different opportunities such as research conferences, internships, and competitions. We give you the tools necessary to succeed after college, turning challenges into opportunities. A lot of opportunities have opened up for me that I'm very grateful for. I've had freelance writing positions, taught poetry workshops. I was even able to travel with an organization with class where I presented a paper on a topic I was very interested in. By majoring in anthropology, communication, tomorrow studies, English, fine arts, history, philosophy, political science, psychology, and sociology, you will meet others who share the same passion and build connections that will last. In class, you'll always have um, a support system no matter where you go during college or after college. Someone will always be there for you. The knowledge that you gain throughout the courses can be applied to anything. It doesn't matter if it's career choice, it can also just be in life. College of Liberal Arts helps you find your moments of transformation from ordinary to extraordinary. The best advice I could give you as a student from UOG is to keep an open mind and also take every opportunity that you can. And if an opportunity is not there at your door, build that door. You learn from our best instructors, books, and our classrooms. The College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Guam is more than just a program. It's a foundation of something greater. I think the professor that inspired me the most is Dr. Randall Johnson because he's really keen on what it is that we're able to do, our abilities, and push us towards being our best. And I think that's important for any professor. You come to college for quality education and what you take away is the experience. I'm pursuing a graduate degree now because I really enjoy doing research and a lot of that encouragement was from my professors. My name is Via DeFont. My name is Marisha Mariano. My name is Anthony Carino. My name is Rojan Javanel. And my, my name is Dr. Rojan with class. class. We help you write your story and it's up to you to finish the rest. Register today and begin writing your future. Welcome back to Triton News TV. Students rejoice. Night school, also known as the school in Pangi, and summer school are happening again. TNT reporter, Laika Santos, tells us how this program is helping students get back on track. A year ago, students filled the halls of George Washington High School. Then, the pandemic hit. Forced to stay home, many students began to struggle. Guam Department of Education offers many programs to help students with their studies. The School on Pwengi, better known as Night School, is one such program offered for free to students close to graduation. 1,750 students were missing from the school system last year October. Dr. Liz Ichihara Rosario, counselor at George Washington High School, has expressed her grief over the loss of some students during the pandemic. We have students that can't function right now with their studies just because they're, they're truly experiencing depression and anxiety. And so we're asking their teachers to be a little bit more understanding and patient. As the pandemic restrictions ease, many of these students made their way back into school. Remedial programs like Escuela on Pwengi and Summer School help students to pick up where they were. This semester we're doing one credit <clears throat> and 
this summer um, is going to be pretty amazing because this summer we're going to be offering our students two credits. And that's the first time it's ever been offered. The program has helped countless students on the road to graduation. Student M, who chose to remain anonymous, is just one of their success stories. So I had the options of either um, retaking the course, the courses um, in the following year, which would essentially push me back, um, push back my graduation date, or I can go to school in Quangy and use that as an opportunity to remake those credits and still graduate with the rest of my class. Escuela and Quangy program coordinator Felix Chaco embraces the changes in the program that is transitioning to online learning and hybrid classes. EP the way it is, this is the um, sort of like a, a glimpse into the future of, um, of our vision, you know, our, especially our vision from our deputy uh, superintendent uh, Sanchez, you know, tr for a true alternative school where um, teachers can teach online. For Dr. Ichihara Rosario, all changes and challenges are worth it if it means the kids come back to school safe and sound. I'm happy. I'm happy that they're here. I'm Laika Santos for TNT. Thank you, Laika. Escuela and Pungi will be a combination of online and face-to-face -face lessons during the six-week session. Interested students should contact their school counselors for information regarding registration and courses offered. Live music struggles to survive on Guam. Over the past year, musicians and local venues alike are hit by the setbacks and continue to adjust as best as they can. TNT reporter Kai Rectal looks at the issues musicians face on Guam. Joe Guam always preferred to be in front of a live audience, but over the past year, he's had to adjust to online streaming. Many other musicians have struggled to adapt to the new stage, but for Joe Guam, this is the life of a musician right here. streaming was nothing new to him. So I actually started live streaming uh, back in January, February of 2018. And with uh, five productions that year, we did five live stream productions that year. And when the pandemic hit last year in March and we were able, and we had to lock down, it was kind of just resuming what we had already, you know, put in place since 2018. Although places like the Hyatt have been fortunate enough to maintain their status quo, Smaller businesses, like the Live House, have had a rough providing for both their employees and musicians. Thomas Pinehoff is the owner of Live House, a bar located in Tumon. He believes that it's mostly small bars and venues that are hurting from the lockdown, and that big venues like the Hyatt continue to make profit off the dire situation. As such, Thomas hosts different musicians to play in his bar in order to keep patrons, thus income, coming to Live House. What Live House is trying to do, we are trying to get back a sense of normality, uh, which includes uh, the musicians which are, uh, who are vendors of ours and uh, gig workers. We believe music is important. The, the name Live House says it all. Uh, we are open to all kind of music. We live with it, we live from it, you know, and uh, we're trying to create uh, good vibes and uh, mental health. Although Thomas and Joe still combat Guam's restrictions related to COVID-19, Fred Berdallo, also known as Freddy from the Four Piece Band, says that chances for live music have been accessible in the U.S. mainland for about a year now. Uh, currently, I'm in Florida, right? And Florida's, uh, Florida has been open uh, since July of last year. Opportunities for, for music, for live music, have been open since July 2020. With how difficult it already is to either jumpstart a career in music, own a small business here on Guam, or perform far from home, Joe, Thomas, and Fred all do their best to keep people's spirits up through music, as the COVID-19 related restrictions slowly loosen on Guam. This is Kai Rectal from TNT. Thank you, Kai. Although everybody has been combating the pandemic for over a year now, it seems that an appreciation for music is still surviving to this day. Local food trucks are bringing their meals closer to the community with Food Truck Grab and Go Wednesdays. In early March, they began welcoming customers to the old carnival grounds in Tizan. The Barragada Mayor's Office organized a festival to help food truck businesses that were affected by COVID-19. Ike Evangelista, owner of 671 Kettle Corn, says that the support from the community was a surprise. The first day, uh, we actually ran out of camel for the first time ever. And so we went to pray for all this, uh, the big crowd. 
uh, even though we were social uh, distancing, uh, we just did. We weren't. We didn't see a big crowd, but to run out of caramel, and caramel was one of our biggest seller. Uh, that was a, a surprise for us. President of the Sadias is a new customer at the festival and says that the food trucks offer meals that can only be found at this weekly event. First time to the to this location, and no, I hear about it a lot. Like everyone likes to uh, talk about. It, I guess like you know, there's something specifically that they want here. So a friend of mine was like really adamant about coming tonight. So. The food truck festival continues to open every Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. While restaurants begin to open for dine-in, local food trucks at the festival continue to provide residents with takeout that is affordable and worthwhile. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. I am Hasey San Jose. I'm Sean Wago, and we'll see you again in the next episode.